All right, everybody. Um, today I'm going to tell you something interesting about what is going to happen tomorrow. And that is that we are going to found, actually found the foundation. It's going to be called Elise. It's uh, basically uh, inspired by Lisa Meitner, the name. Um, and instead of starting a utility, we are starting a foundation instead. And this foundation is going to um, work with the government, work with uh, the industry, uh, work with utilities in the Netherlands in order to get uh, a, a good compelling business case for, uh, for nuclear again in the Netherlands. So what happened why why does this uh this foundation well it's pretty simple um so in september uh this year uh klaus Dijkhoff, who is the leader of the vvd party at the time um in the house of representatives managed to get uh, a majority to vote in favor of uh, doing a market consultation, a market consultation uh, about what the government needs to do to build, to facilitate the building of new nuclear reactors in the Netherlands. And obviously this was a, a huge chance that we jumped on immediately. For, initially we thought, well, maybe we want to build these nuclear power plants ourselves. But then we realized that there are a couple of utilities in the Netherlands that are actually interested in building new nuclear reactors. One of them is APZ. So instead, what we are doing now is we are starting a foundation. This foundation is basically a lobby. It's not a grassroots uh, activism thing. It's actually working with the government working with local governments, working with uh, the industry, working with utilities in order to create the most compelling uh, business case for nuclear possible in the Netherlands. So the first thing that we are going to do as a foundation is create a white paper. And this white paper is, is basically aimed at giving reasonable answers to the market consultation so that the government understands that they are responsible for a lot of the stuff that goes on in the energy industry. Now, there's often this idea, this meme, uh, that, you know, in the Netherlands, anyone can, can basically go to the, the government and ask for a license to build a nuclear power plant and operate it things obviously aren't that simple. It's true, there is a, a place where you can ask for a license. It's called the ANVS. It's the, basically the Dutch equivalent of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, in the US. And, but in order to, to get this thing going, we need much more commitment from the Dutch government. So this white paper, which we are going to write, is going to be the tip of the spear. And basically, uh, first of all, we are going to show what happens when, uh, when governments don't show themselves to be reliable partners to the, to the utilities who want to, you know, uh, create energy from atoms. Um, simply look at Belgium look at Germany, uh, maybe California. We're also going to highlight some of the troubles that we had with a new coal-fired power plant in the Netherlands and with biomass. This is pure, mainly to highlight that the government is one of the, the riskiest partners there is because of, the, their, because of its capricious nature. Uh, even though they can say, well, yes, we are committed to, for instance, biomass, which they did, uh, when, when some new insight comes and they say, well, we are going to do a 180 on, on, on biomass, uh, 
that's what happened in the Netherlands. And now the biomass plants, well, basically they're out of luck because, you know, a large portion of their income has evaporated. Which means that, you know, some some stuff needs to happen to keep these plants running. But it's not altogether, uh, you know... Uh, they don't have a, an assurance that they can that they can uh, earn back the money that they invested in the retrofit of these coal-fired power plants that were retrofitted into being either coal-fired, so meaning that there's coal and biomass in there, or completely biomass-fired. So that's basically the first thing that we want to highlight. The second thing that we want to highlight is what happens if the government does all the right things. And doing all the right things is not rocket science. Um, it's all based on making sure that there is a reasonable interest rate uh, for the financing of the nuclear power plant. So instead of going for interest rates of 8 to 10%, you need to go down to 1% to 2%, which are the going rates at this moment. A friend of mine just uh, got uh, a financing deal on a solar power plant for 1.5%. And this was a megawatt scale, so it's it's not too big, not too, not too small either. But it shows, it shows you that it's possible. These are going rates at this moment. So we want the government, we want to show the government what happens when they make sure through a guarantee or perhaps via a state, a state financing, what happens if the nuclear power plant can be financed at 1% or 2% interest. Same can be said for discounting. Um, what happens if we choose a cheaper over a, a more expensive uh, nuclear power plant. We are going to be technology neutral in this regard. We're not going to say, okay, we want to do the EPR or we want to do the AP1000 or we want to do the X300 or new scale or whatever. We are just going to show them what's on the market, what it costs, and 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 how much it's going to cost if you want to run it in the Netherlands based on different interest rates. Um, and and this and this will open many eyes because because if we show them what happens if you if if you finance this plan at one percent and then do it with increments of a half percent up upward and we plot this in a graph then you, then you can then you can see that you know the cost escalates quite quickly. But also like like with the first thing. Um, the EPR issues, um, a large part of the cost overruns with the EPRs had to do not only with the cost of financing the plan, financing the project, but also with the fact that um, design changes were being made during construction, which set these construction schedules back for years and in some cases so 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 basically you can experience two things during one of these construction jobs either you build something wrong which means that you have to rebuild it you have to either fix the issue order a new component or you know tear a piece down and rebuild it which is going to cost you time but the second thing that can happen in this western world where the governments think that they can do anything to these projects is that the government says, well, that needs to be a meter concrete more than it is right now, which happened at Okiluoto, for instance, uh, you know, which means that you have to go back to the drawing board again, figure out how this is going to figure into, uh, into the plant, into, I don't know, you know, all these kinds of things that, that, that change, all these parameters that change and need to be recalculated and everything. So that's going to cost time. So what we are going to say to the government is quite simple. Do not start 
without having a finished design. And don't change the design during construction. With that, you have eliminated one of the two uh, potential um, cost overrun um, issues in a nuclear power build. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to help the government understand that we have about 15 gigawatts of fossil fueled uh, power generation in the Netherlands. Um, all these uh, power plants have, you know, uh, high voltage uh, DC uh, connections. So we're talking about 150 kilovolts up to 380. And these sites are valuable. Not just because there is a power plant there now, but these power plants are basically interchangeable. You can take down the power plant, but for instance, leave the switch yard, leave the cooling infrastructure, and then replace the generator and you know the cooking the cooking part of the of the of the of the power plant with a nuclear nuclear power plant. So there's there there is so what we want to do is show the government what would happen if you would incentivize utilities to replace those units with nuclear units. And eventually you will end up with uh, straight one, one for one uh, carbon emission reductions. Uh, you'll get a, you'll save jobs, those sites, because, because in, in some cases it, it is, uh, it, it is normal to greenfield a place once you decommission a plant. And this is not just the loss of a power plant. This is a loss of jobs. This is a loss of economic activity in the region. And this is something that we want to safeguard. We want to safeguard the, 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 the area uh, for continued economic uh, activity. So th this is it in a nutshell, basically. Uh, let me see, because I had, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so this is our website, by the way. Um, this is the website that we've built um, for Elisa. Now, this is this is still in Dutch. It's it's very rudimentary. Um, you know, it gives it, it's it's basically our philosophy on how we think that. Uh, that nuclear could be, could be a beneficial technology to the Netherlands. Um, there's also an English uh, there's also an English part in here. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, it's here. It's on the main page. Uh, click here. Click here for English. It's uh, in the elbow of the the girl who's running through the tulips. Um, but that wasn't all that I wanted to show you so basically you know um our uh so, so our, our idea if you if you look at at this uh this thing here right here that i built uh this is this is a a, a, a um a redacted version of this and this isn't dutch so uh yeah but it shows you that there's that we're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, we're working on a lot of uh, a lot of things. Um, it's also interesting to note that I will be joint, so I will be chairman of the foundation. Gijs Swatzenberg will be secretary, and Albert van der Weyck will be treasurer. Uh, we have a working group of about ten people. Uh, for this white paper, we have five uh, a work group of five people. And uh, we are actually looking for extra people to help us, preferably Dutch, because everything we are going to do in the initial phase is in Dutch. And obviously, uh, we will start fundraising pretty soon. So if, if you have, if you would like to contribute to this process, um, Please, uh, please hang around. Uh, 
check the check the YouTube channel from time to time, or perhaps go to the website from time to time, because there will be a crowdfunding action uh, coming in soon. Because this is the, obviously this is going to be an organization that is uh, uh, that will that will consist of pro professionals, obviously. Um, which also means, and this is something that some people might think strange, but that I will be looking for my own replacement straight away. Um, I am I am somebody who works on the big picture, uh, but I'm not I'm not a hard nosed, uh, you know, um, I'm not this 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 uh, this this really um, this bored tiger. Uh, that's something that we. We say in the Netherlands, I don't, I, I don't know how to call it in English, but I really want to want to uh, find a replacement for myself, somebody who has um, mainly political ties, uh, great political ties with uh, the House of Representatives, and who knows his way or her way around around politics. And I prefer a woman, by the way. So if if you're looking at this and, and you know a Dutch woman who who might suit uh, this role as chairwoman of the Elisa Foundation, please let me know. Um, so yeah, that's it. It's a it's a it's a very exciting time for me. Um, I've been really really busy on this stuff, uh, which means that. Obviously, the, the the YouTube channel has been a little bit quiet lately. But given the fact that this is a bit the biggest undertaking that I've ever done, you know, what am I going to say? And anyway, in any in any case, thank you all for watching. Have a nice day.